In this video, we're going to take a look at Virtual Classroom. This is a web conferencing tool that's built into D2L, and it allows you to meet your students in an online conference. I'm working with a new D2L shell that I just set up. To find Virtual Classroom, it's generally under this Course Tools drop-down menu on the main navigation bar, and you're actually going to scroll down, and it's usually on the bottom. There it is, Virtual Classroom. I'll click that. The first thing that we're going to do is set up a new meeting. If you click this schedule meeting on the bottom right hand side, click that box. It's going to ask you for a title. I generally use the date for this. If you want to set the time for another time in the future, you can open that dialog box up and set the time. If you want to set it for right now, you can do that. Um, length or duration of the session, you can go up to 90 minutes for our sessions. If you have a scheduled day and time that you meet your classes, you can have this repeat weekly. I'm going to leave it on do not repeat. You can set it up to automatically record when you enter the room. I usually leave this unchecked as you can set it to record once you're in the class and active and ready. You can automatically publish that recorded meeting so that students can access your class at a later date. You can allow external participants this will give you a link that you can actually send to people who you would like to attend that may not be enrolled in your D2L shell. And the invite entire class is checked to ensure that all students enrolled in your D2L course are able to access your online meeting. I'm going to save those settings. The course has been set up. To actually enter the room now, you're going to click on the Actions button and you're going to launch the room. As it's launching, you have a few more options. There's some call-in options, so you can actually dial in on a phone and enter a code when prompted, so students can enter that way if they don't have access to a laptop or an iPad to enter. There's some computer pre-checks that can be done to make sure that uh, your computer is ready for the meeting, and just some quick tips like using headphones to limit echo while you're in the meeting room. I'm going to enter the room now. When you first enter, it's going to ask you how you would like to join. Would you like to listen only or use your microphone? Generally, I have microphones set up. You may have to allow access to your microphone. And a mic check will start. So if you can hear your voice, you just check yes and it will load the room. One thing you may want to do right away is uh, click this recording button to make sure that you're recording your session so that students can access the class again at a later date. In order to see who's in your room, you can use this user toggle to open the menu up. Now you see we have one sample student in the room. Another option that you can look at in this control is the chat. Here you can chat to your students in the main box. Students can also answer back. If we put our cursor over this sample student, we'll see some more options. We can control whether they have access to the chat box. We can make them a presenter so that they can use some of the whiteboard tools, which we will look at. You can remove the user or promote them to moderator, allowing them to upload images, PowerPoint presentations, PDF files to share with the rest of the class. You'll notice this Actions button on the bottom left. If you click that, you have access to upload a presentation, so you can upload a pre-made PowerPoint presentation, PDF file, or images. You can initiate a poll with to control your mic, you can control this mute button. It, the program lets you know when your mic is muted to ensure that it's on when you are speaking to your students. When you first enter the room, your microphone is automatically on, so you may want to hit that mute button right away so that they're not picking up background noises. The video menu is next to that, so you can actually turn on your camera so that students can see your face, and that will appear above the whiteboard. 
and you can share your screen. So if you want to navigate to a website and have students see that website, you would share your screen so that they can see that. On the far right, there's a tools tray here for text. You can write text on the whiteboard. Students also have access to this if you give it to them. Again, you'd have to click their name and give them access to be a presenter or a, an actual moderator so they have access to the tools. There's shapes that you can use, a pencil, and a pointer as well. You can control the font size, the text, color. You can undo actions and delete from the whiteboard. This X clears all annotations that are made on the whiteboard by anyone who put anything on it, so it will turn to a blank white screen again. And if you have multi-users using this, um, students and you can collaborate on the whiteboard with that, and you can turn that on or off as needed. When you are ready to leave your session, you will click the three dots on the top right and end your meeting or leave to finish up the session. It will ask you if you're sure you want to leave the meeting, and you can leave the meeting, and the dialog box is okay for you to close up now as the session is finished. If you did set your session to record, sometimes this may take a while, but if you actually go back into Virtual Classroom and take a look at your setup meetings, once the meeting is ready, it will go into your archive or recorded meeting sessions. And this is where students can go back and actually watch your session by clicking on the tray here and um, actually previewing it and watching it. Again, generally this takes about 20 minutes to show up after your recording. And once made public, students can go in and watch this recording.